TV Power Up, serving photovoltaic contractors and integrators with practical information and answers. This is Tim Palaga for PV Power Up, and on this episode, we're going to talk about a weather station here, and we're speaking with Bob Rupold, who is the data acquisition system integrator at Innovatus Solar, and he's going to explain what we do and how we install these uh, weather stations. Okay. Thanks, Tim. This, uh, what we have here, is a, a WeatherHawk weather station system. It's a fully integrated system that allows us to collect all the data that we need on the site. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have wind direction and uh, speed, as well as a uh, rain sensor, a ambient this temperature. Sensor this is the rain here. sensor. Okay. Empties itself automatically, so you don't have to worry about doing anything oh, with nice. it. Uh, fills up, counts the number of times it empties, and that's how it knows how much rain has fallen. Okay. Uh, uh, we have a uh, cell temperature meter. We have uh, ambient temperature, um, a humidity sensor, and uh, most importantly for a solar installation, we've got how much insulation we have or what the actual irradiance is falling on the site. This is the, on the little site. light sensor yes. sensing how much sun there is. Yes. The irradiance sensor you're right. talking about. And we use this data to correlate uh, the production so that we know are we making as much power as we should given the amount of sunlight that's falling on the system. Oh, very nice. And then uh, you mentioned a cell temperature. What's that? Uh, when we uh, put a photovoltaic system into place, uh, the, the hotter that cell gets, the, the less efficiently it produces. So a lead actually comes from this system over to one of the cells as a reference cell on the, on the uh, photovoltaic system, allows us to gauge what the temperature is actually on the roof. Again, that gives us a way to double check the efficiency of the system and make sure it's working within the, the parameters that we've defined. Okay, very good. Now, um, this, this is on a tripod here, I can see. Is, are there any criteria that is necessary for installing this, let's say, on the ground or on a roof of a building? We, we do have a few criteria. In this case, so that we can stand here and talk to it, we've, we've got a little bit shorter. If we were installing this on the ground, we would want to have a minimum of 9 to 12 feet clearance from the ground. Okay. Uh, on a rooftop, we want to keep it at least 6 to 8 feet above the roof okay. um, and keep it well away from any heat sources that would, would throw off our temperatures. The, uh, yeah, uh, I would assume that would include shading of the, the lights. Right. Here we want to stay, stay away from any shade sources. Uh, we don't want this to be shaded at all during the day. So we want to make sure it's in a zone that has no shading on it. Okay. Uh, as far as wind obstacles, that gets a little tricky sometimes. You want to actually have this, uh, well, let me start by telling you, this has to be oriented due south. Okay. So, uh, the pointy um, end goes south? Right. There's actually a little arrow here on okay. top that, we can, that gives us the, uh, the direction, but that's oriented due south. And that alignment makes sure that we have all of our measurements correct. That's, again, most important for the irradiance meter. Okay. It has to know exactly where it is based on, on the, uh, the alignment of the system. So regardless of where the rooftop is or where the sensor is located, we, we align this due south. The um, wind, then, affects objects up to 10 times the height of the object that it, that's in front of it. Okay. So we want to have any obstacle that is between us and this sensor, we want to have 10 times its height clearance before we reach this, okay. and about five times on the backside to stop any eddies from coming back around and affecting it. Okay. If you're not as interested in tracking the wind, then it's not quite as important, okay. but it's still it's beneficial to have. I understand all the different devices we have here now, and uh, we're going to be collecting a lot of useful data, but how do we actually get this somewhere so we can use it? Yeah. Underneath the weather station, there are a couple of connections. One of them for power, the other one for a simple serial connection. This allows us to collect all the data. The, the board and all the systems are built inside of this. This takes the information back to a PC, and then depending on what you're doing with it, you're either going to send it back to a monitoring service or collecting it on your own system. Now, we've got some cords here. Are there any wireless options for this? There are some wireless options available. Uh, WeatherHawk gives us a number of different options. Great, okay. Let's take a look at the box now. This is specific to a fat spaniel monitoring system installation. Okay. This is actual PC built into the system. This little box here is a PC? It's a complete computer. It collects the data, sends it over your, your network uh, via Cat5 to uh, the fat spaniel servers. Okay. And then what are the other items in here? Well, we've got power supply here. We can either hardwire this system directly into an electrical, or we can plug it in with a, a regular plug into an outlet. This converts it into the appropriate power to run the computer and send the data. Okay, well, great. Now, do you need uh, multiple boxes and weather stations on a single installation? You can have up to two separate weather stations connected to this one box, and they can be on opposite ends of a system to, to verify the things are consistent throughout. If you want to have more than that, then you have to have additional uh, gateways. Okay, great. Well, Bob, I certainly appreciate your time today in explaining to us the data acquisition system for a WeatherHawk weather station. 
And this is Tim Pelega for PV Power Up. We would like to thank our sponsor, Innovatus Solar, a turnkey integrator and distributor of PV modules, inverters, and all the additional equipment to install a state-of-the-art photovoltaic system. Visit Innovatus Solar at inovateusolar.com to find a dealer, purchase PV equipment, inquire about dealerships, or speak with a salesperson about Innovative Solar's turnkey services, including feasibility studies, engineering, construction, and financing.